And our final breed group of cattle will be our American breeds. And our American breeds uh, are our Boss Indicus or Boss Indicus cross breeds. Uh, when we think about Boss Indicus cattle, predominantly, or the predominant breed of Boss Indicus cattle here in the United States would be our Brahmin. These cattle are known for their tropical adaptivity, so they're, they're adapted to the hot, humid climates of the Gulf Coast region of the United States, and especially adapted to the climates here in Texas. Uh, those cattle, in addition to their, their adaptability to the, in, the heat uh, and humidity, they're also uh, uh, more hardy, more insect resistant, uh, just more parasite uh, resistance in general. They're also known for their maternal ability and their ability to make uh, excellent mother cows in the Gulf Coast region of the United States. Um, in addition to that, they've got a tremendous amount of hybrid vigor and performance in them as well. Some of the downsides of those breeds, uh, and one of their biggest uh, downside is, on average, they tend to be lower uh, in marbling and, and have lower quality grades, again, on average within that breed group. So with those breeds that we have for our market steer shows here in Texas, we have our Brahmin, Brangus, Santa Gertrudis, Simbra, and then finally our American Breeds Cross, which would be a, a combination of American Breed, our Brahmin, and an additional breed. They cross, the word cross, that means American Breed Crosses are usually crosses between Boss Indicus and Boss Taurus cattle, sometimes even uh, multiple crosses, multiple generation crosses, even with Boss Indicus, Boss Taurus, multiple generations on both sides. When we look at American breed crosses, we realize that they can be any color and any pattern. They can look like anything, in other words, in terms of color and shape. Confirmation is not a big concern in American breed crosses. How much bone, how much muscle they have, how they look phenotypically is not traditionally real important. If you'll notice on the breed guidelines, one of the most important things that we stress is that last sentence down there under acceptable breed characteristics, where it says with adequate boss indicus head, eye, and ear characteristics or influence, sheath score is irrelevant. In other words, we like to look at American crosses head on, coming at us, and if their head, eye, ear, nose and muzzle and all of that is correct in terms of breed characteristics we think they get in regardless of what their sheath looks like now, a lot of people want to say if they've got a big hanging pendulous sheath then they're automatically in that is not correct they've got to have boss indicus influence about their head eye and ear and when we talk about that we talk about a bigger ear that's open forward drooping forward we also talk about the brow of the eye. That's a bigger brow. We also talk about the angle of the eye. We talk about the width of the muzzle, shape of the jawline, and how that all blends into the head, face, and neck area. We also like to see American cattle with some sheath on, ideally. That is a direct influence of Brahma influence, or it's an indicator of Brahma influence, whether they have it or not, sheath is an indicator. Then on those absolute disqualifications, we need to go over those. A combination of a boss torus head, eye, and ear. When we say boss torus, we're talking about a smaller ear. We're talking about an ear that is shaped differently. It's rounded on the end more. It doesn't open as forward, and it's not down on the side of the head as much. We also talk about a boss torus head. Their eye is going to be different, their brow and their forehead and their pole is all going to be smoother, their muzzle's going to be smaller, everything's going to look a little different there, as opposed to a boss indicus influence, which would be a Brahma influence, head, eye, and ear. Now without that boss indicus influence, it doesn't matter what they look like, they will be disqualified if they don't show Brahma influence in their head, eye, ear area. This particular steer is a Brennell steer that we think uh, gets in quite handily. If you'll notice, he's got the right shape and character about his ears, about his eyes, about his muzzle, his face, and his head. And he does probably have a number two sheath, uh, so he's gonna get in pretty handily. We don't see any problems with him. Here's a headshot of the same steer, and realize 
you've got to get in front of these animals to see what they look like. It's, it's just imperative that, that you look at them head on and see what that character looks like. It's also nice to go around and look at the rest of the body and phenotypically assess the rest of the confirmation and all, but uh, head on shot's the best one. We've got a red steer here, easily gets into the American breed class. Uh, we see about his head and ears and, and eye character is all good. We've got some sheep and some skin around. Uh, everything looks good on him. We also notice, you know, there's some minor details. Most American cattle have a little different hip structure. Most of them have a little different tail set and anal uh, transition there a little bit. All of those things are American uh, indicators. A head shot of that same red steer. We've got a big ear. You notice how it's deep. It's opening forward and drooping forward. Here we have an American breed steer that probably is more traditional back in the old days when, when some of us were kids when we classified American steers as 3 8 5 8 This is, is kind of what you expect in that situation. We don't do that anymore, but he's got quite a bit more character. It's very easy to see that uh, he shows quite a bit of Obama influence. A head shot of that same steer. Remember we said that color doesn't make any difference. Confirmation doesn't make any difference. It's all about the breed here. We have a cream colored or tan colored steer here that gets in. We've got plenty of character about the head. That ear is going forward. It's down on the side of the head. We've got a big brow. Uh, and we've got some extra skin. Hip structure reads the same way. It gets in pretty easy. Same steer head on. We need to remember that all of these guidelines will not go into effect until 2013, so don't go home and be selling all your steers. Here's a black steer that probably gets a little bit more uh, questionable in terms of head character. His ears are up just a little more, but uh, we think he gets in when you get right in front of him. He's got big ears. Uh, they do open up correctly. He's got some brow to him, some width of muzzle as well. He probably gets in. Another good headshot of an American calf, if you want to you know, kind of see what uh, what American ear and head set, ear set looks like. Another one that gets a little more on the border in terms of some of his rear half of his body, the way he's made, but uh, head certainly reads American and ears do as well. Another calf that's very similar, he's got big ears, he's got a big brow. Got quite a bit of American look about his head and face. You look at him head on, got big drooping ears. They open forward and down, big muzzle, big eyebrow. Uh, everything looks good there. Now we go into some slick calves that are slick shorn. Actually, they're a little easier to look at and a little easier to evaluate. Uh, a very nice American calf here that gets in and has plenty of character. Uh, no question about him. Head shot of that same steer. You notice the, the bigness of his eyebrow. You notice the depth, width, and length of his ear as well. Then we've got a black cat that doesn't get in. Doesn't matter how big his ears are, or how hairy they are. There's not any character there in terms of the way his head is shaped. His ears are up on the side of his pole instead of hanging down and forward. Uh, not enough eyebrow or skin involved there to let him in. Out. Got a black baldy calf here that gets in, quite a bit of character. Don't think there's any question on him in terms of noticing that there is definitely Roman influence in this calf. Then we come to a cream or yellow colored calf that uh, is a little bit questionable, a little more on the borderline. The reasons why we say that is we look at his head and we see that yes, there is some Brahma influence there probably. We question how much without getting a true head-on shot, without getting around. We think that he's probably going to be all right in his head, but we don't know for sure about the length of his ear. We like his brow, we like his muzzle, but we don't. We want to see more of how those ears set. We want to see more of the depth of that ear and the length of that ear. Him being so clean made uh, raises a little red flag in that, that we just want to see more detail about him. He's awfully nice calf. If he gets in, he's going to do awfully well. 
another black cat that uh, is very, very questionable. Uh, he's going to be out. He's got big ears, but they're shaped wrong. They're pointing forward. They're more erect. They're not correct. Uh, probably when you shaved all the hair off, there wouldn't be as much ear there as well. Just not any character, great character about his eye and his head. American cat that does get in. Uh, he's got big ears. Good character about his head. Has some sheep about him as well. Another cat that does get in has good character. Maybe looks a little more bullish about his head and neck, but, but still classifies as an American. Another black cat classifies as American. Has enough character. A red cat that's probably a little more questionable, a little more on the borderline. Um, we question this cat and then left him saying that we need to see more. We need to get around in front of him and see just how long those ears are and, and how they sit. You know, looking at you. Realize these are pictures. Sometimes these steers are on alert and their ears are kind of pointed up because they're getting a the picture taken. So sometimes you don't always get a, a natural look. This steer is somewhat questionable. You ask yourself, well, he's got all of his sheath on him. Uh, why doesn't he get in? Uh, questions on him is that his face is awfully straight and exotic looking. And the front half of his body is awfully exotic looking in terms of type and kind. We want to see more of this cat before we can really say yes or no. A cream colored cat that's also on the borderline, he's just marginal on size of ear and face. We we'll probably need a little more inspection. Uh, more likely we'd probably get in, but really need to get a head on to see what he looks like coming in. A black calf that gets in that uh, Shows enough character, I think, pretty well. Head, neck, body, and where you want to look. And we end with a charlotte colored cat that I think is a borderline cat. Looks to be big, long eared, open eared, and all that. You need to get in front of him and look at him some more and inspect him there. Um, cleanliness and all that would, would raise a little red flag. You just need to inspect him some more to be sure.